Codename Kids Next Door is a show full of kids fighting the good fight against adults and trying to stay as young as they can for as long as possible. And out of the core five Kids Next Door members, the one who seemed to constantly show their cheerful and childlike innocence was without a doubt number three, also known as Kuki Sanban. It was almost like her parents had raised her to simply be quiet and smile. And sadly, like most of your favorite childhood characters, the internet has gotten a hold of her. And now it's starting to seem like her unending happiness may have stemmed from something terrible at home. So if this theory is true, then Kuki was using her cheerful nature as a coping mechanism to mask her pain from the rest of her friends and teammates. So brace yourself, because this dark theory about number three might just shatter all the hope that you had for any of your childhood cartoons not having darker undertones and potentially my future career options because I'm saying number three and not number three. Thanks, creators of the show. So as you know, number three was practically synonymous with happiness and very rarely depicted as being in a bad mood throughout the series. And well, according to this theory, that cheerful attitude she had was nothing more than a facade that she put on to face the world around her without breaking down mentally. And if you're wondering what could have been so bad that it caused Kuki to feel as though she needed to hide her pain from those around her, the answer is both simple and complex. The short answer is childhood trauma, which was most likely inflicted in or around her household. But beyond that, it's hard to pin down exactly what would have caused Kuki to feel so low that she had to overcorrect her attitude by pretending to be so happy that it was practically contagious. But it can't hurt to try though. As far as the show is concerned, number three has two parents with very different personalities from one another. What's never explained though is whether they're both Kuki's biological parents or not. While many fans assume that her parents were both related to her by blood, there's always a chance that something happened within her family that caused her mother or father to remarry. But more on that in a minute. So, Codename Kids Next Door almost always showed Kuki as being a very gentle and patient character, except for the very few times she actually lost her cool. This could imply that she had to learn to be a caregiver from a young age because of what she went through in her home life. And on top of that, number three was also shown to be a very loving sister when it came to spending time with and caring for her younger sister, Mushi which again could simply mean that she was a great big sister or it could hint at something darker dwelling within their home. Now, as far as theories go as to what was so bad about number three's childhood that she needed to put up a front of false happiness, well, there are actually a few theories based on everything that's known about her and her relatives. The first one involves a tragedy that may have surrounded the matriarch of the Sandban family. In the show, fans meet Kuki's mother, Genki, but based on the way she interacted with her daughter, it seems like she may have actually been her stepmom all along. You see, there are a lot of differences between number three and her mother in the show that could be explained by the two of them not actually being related after all. Since, as they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And if Kuki and Genki were related, then it wasn't even an apple and it fell very, very far from the tree. Because unlike number three, Genki was depicted as quiet and almost gloomy, at least for the most part. Now, Genki's less than positive attitude could have been a result of her own childhood, which was proven to be pretty heartbreaking in clues. In the episode, Genki revealed that she wasn't able to play with toys as a child and implied that she grew up in a pretty strict household. But you would think that this would make her want to be happy and cheerful around her daughter to make sure that she didn't grow up in the same way. But instead, she remained quiet and almost distant from number three. The only time that Genki seemed super close to number three was when she spoiled her with her favorite rainbow monkey toys. But don't worry, Genki being number three's stepmom instead of her biological mother wasn't a tragedy because there's nothing wrong with that. Instead, what would have traumatized Kuki to the point of pretending to be happy at such a young age could have involved what happened to her biological mother. And in this case, it was probably something as serious as number three's biological mother possibly dying when Kuki was young, but still old enough to remember. As you can guess, a child losing someone close to them can stick with them for the rest of their life, and that goes double if that person is immediate family like a parent. So if Kuki's mother passed away, it could have been enough to mentally scar the young girl and cause her mind to regress in a way that mimics an image of pure happiness. Or another way of looking at it is that the happy and carefree girl that number three pretended to be could have been a way to protect Mushi, her younger sister. As an elder sibling, Kuki would set 
set the tone for what the children of the house should act like, and because Kuki was walking around with a smile, Mushi knew that she could as well. And while that might sound positive, there's still the underlying factor that number three may have only been pretending to be happy to help her and Mushi cope with their biological mother's death. But if this theory is true, at least number three still had a mother to love and care for her with Genki around to give her all of the rainbow monkeys to help take the pain away. Now, another possibility as to what traumatized number three at home enough to make her feel the need to fake a happy smile 24-7 involves Kuki's father. Kani Sanban was only shown a few times throughout the series, but every time he was on screen, one thing was pretty clear. He didn't have any time for nonsense. And, well, according to this theory, Kani also didn't have any time for his children or his family for that matter. And whenever he did, he was never quite too happy about it. Now, looking at it from number three's perspective, she grew up with a father who she probably felt didn't love her enough to pay her any attention. And anytime he was around, she probably thought that he hated her because of his irritable attitude. That in itself could be enough to have a child wondering what they did wrong. And in number three's case, maybe she thought that harboring a fake smile was better than not smiling at all. At least then she wouldn't have people asking her what was wrong all the time, and she would have been able to show her younger sister how to put on a happy smile through the tough times. Honestly, number three growing up in a neglectful household seems plausible, because not only would it have scarred the kid, but it also would explain why she and Mushi were so close. If this theory is true, then number three would have basically been responsible for raising and caring for her younger sister. And as heartbreaking as it would be, at least they had each other, and their rainbow monkeys of course. Actually, number three using a fake sense of happiness to cope with something traumatic from her childhood would explain her obsession with rainbow monkeys. And before you ask, no, obsession is not too strong of a word. Throughout the entire series, number three loved rainbow monkeys and her knowledge of the lore surrounding the colorful plushies knew no boundaries. In fact, the few times that she let her inner rage out was only ever when her plushies and toys were in danger or when someone made fun of her rainbow monkeys. And well, there's a good chance that rainbow monkeys became number three's comfort objects. A comfort object is exactly what it sounds like, an item or group of items that children or infants tend to cling to when they need to feel calm and secure. The objects are usually soft or cuddly toys like teddy bears, blankets, or in Kuki's case, rainbow monkeys. And then, you know, when you grow up, your comfort item becomes your phone. So consider that a downgrade upgrade, that's up to you. Now, just because a child has a comfort object, that doesn't mean that they went through something traumatic, but it can be a sign when combined with other factors, such as number three's constantly happy attitude and caregiver mindset. On top of that, if the first theory happens to be true and number three's mother died, Rainbow Monkeys would have been Genki's way to connect with her stepdaughter. And because of that, number three may have seen Rainbow Monkeys as a symbol of love, which technically they were, according to the show's lore. But for number three, it would have been in a much more literal sense, because the monkeys would have been used to show that even though her biological mother passed away, she still had a stepmother who loved her. But what do you think about this dark theory though? Was number three truly trying to mask her pain by pretending to be cheerful, or do you think she was just the happiest child in the world and nothing could faze her? Be sure to let me know in the comments below, I look forward to hearing what you have to say.